Welcome back. This is the Multisport Marathoner, part four. Today we're going to talk about tempo and core pace. In my channel archives is a video called Determining Zone 3 and 4. And tempo is the dividing point, or where we target tempo, is the dividing point between Zone 3 and Zone 4. It's a moderately hard effort where the work rate is up, but it's not painful. Some people call it sort of happy hard. So you feel like you're working, but you're not panting and the legs aren't burning. It's often referred to as marathon pace, but it's only marathon pace if you're able to hold it for the marathon uh, distance. And many people are going to be finding that they are running considerably slower than that on average across the marathon. So I prefer to think about core pace. And core pace is the likely pace that you're going to be running on marathon day. And it's actually a little bit quicker because you're going to have aid stations and corners and, and all different things that will take a little bit away from that pace. So core pace is a little bit quicker than goal pace and it's, requir it's what's required to hit goal pace. So let's talk about determining our tempo workouts. So we've got a progressive lactate test here uh, that I did and those are 10 minute steps. Now you don't necessarily need to be taking lactate, but it sure makes it a lot easier for you to home in on what appropriate tempo targets are. You can also do it by feel, but I prefer to use lactate because it's a little bit more accurate. Now, if you're using heart rate, I have a way to triangulate it for you. And we're going to use my data set to help you guide yourself in. So the top of zone one. So lactate threshold one. So it's the point where the lactate starts to tick up. So it's a little past this five minute per K pace for me. And I could probably try and convince myself that it was closer to this 437 K pace, but that didn't feel like the point. It actually felt like I was leaving perhaps a little earlier. So for this, we're going to say it's about 130 beats. That was the maximum heart rate that I saw in that 10 minute step. Now to that, we're going to add 15 beats. So 130 plus 15, that's 145 for the bottom up estimate of tempo to get myself into what's called zone three. Now the top down method is if you have a hour of power, a race where you did a best effort or a training effort that took, uh, that took you up, it, and it's the heart rate that you settled into for that hour. Now, I don't have that, but if I did, it would probably be right now, maybe about 153, say. Now from that, I'm gonna take away eight to 12 beats, and that's gonna take me down to about 140 to 145. Again, round numbers. So from the bottom up method, remember that took me up to about 145, the top down was sort of taking me to about 140 to 145. So the range I have is about 140 to 145. Now another way to dial it in is to take your 85% of your maximum heart rate. So 166 was my max, and so that's going to be about 141, my last season max. So they're, all of these are getting me in about... The same ballpark, 140 to 145 beats. So for my tempo work, if I'm going to use heart rate and effort, I want that sort of happy, hard feeling, and I want to be rolling along somewhere in that 140 to 145 range. And I know that I'm going to be giving myself the necessary stimulus. However, for the marathon, many of us have pace goals. And a reality check those pace goals we're going to need to run at those paces. Now, the other benefit is as we roll up time at those specific paces, we're going to get more economical, more efficient at those paces. So we're getting kind of, we're getting the reality check, but we're also getting better at doing what we want to do. So a way to do that is to do a tempo workout. Now, initially, you're not going to be throwing in huge amounts of this type of training. Remember, we're building up the bike volume. We're building our general capacity. And 
we're just developing ourselves and trying to get that mileage up that I talked about in the last episode to make the marathon more reasonable relative to our chronic training volume. So easy way to do that is start with a bike warm up. The warm up I do says SART there. It's called a Swedish Active Readiness Test. If you're interested in learning about that, it's on my website, Endurance Essentials. That's the name of the article, Swedish Active Readiness Test. It can explain what I'm doing there. It's about a half hour, easy but warm up on the bike. Get the cadence up, get the legs ready to roll. Move to the treadmill. 1K easy, and then 8K where I'm building up through my green zone. Basically, it's all zone one, and I'm just bringing the pace up and getting the body ready. Then chill a bit, have a drink, and then I'm going to use pace rather than try to build to heart rate. You can do it any way you want. On the treadmill, it's easier just to dial in pace and have a look at what happens to heart rate as a reality check. Now, remember uh, that lactate test, my 417K pace generated a lactate of 1.8, which is only about 0.6 above the lowest that I saw in my baseline. So that's technically, if you were using just purely lactate, you would say that's the top of my zone two. However, looking at the heart rate that was generated, as well as my percentage of max and how I felt, I feel that that might be an appropriate pace uh, for me to do my tempo work. I'd rather make a mistake on the low side to start than shell myself and have to have a couple days off because I was going too fast. So the set is simple. 2K tempo, 1K easy. And by easy, I'm probably going to back off, back down into that zone one pace. I'm going to put a 30-second walking break at the start of each of those Ks because I find that walk breaks give me faster recovery and they also change the muscle activation. So I'm much, much less likely to have issues with my calves and particularly my hamstrings uh, over time if I'm just throwing in those little changes. As well, if you're planning on taking anything from the aid stations during your race, you need to train that power walk. So you become more efficient, not just at the power walk, but more efficient with slowing down and speeding up the changes that you'll need. And when you're going through the aid stations, come into the aid station, drop the heart rate, then grab what you need. And on the way out is when you're going to drink it. When your heart rates come down a bit and you're relaxed, you'll get more of the aid into your body and the aid stations won't be a big jump in stress. And as well, if you go for the late tables, they're less crowded. So I hope that helps. We're going to build on this with additional workouts and additional concepts for you to apply in your training. Thanks for listening.